Daddy man. Hey there, mutant family. It is Friday night. I am your Darcy, Daddy man, Darcy in the kitchen. And that can only mean one thing. It is time for the Mutant Cafe Halloween Hoot Nanny pre show. Cheers, y'all. Alright, this wig is going to drive me crazy. I don't know how Darcy does it with her hair, not her wig. <laughs> Alright, we got a lot to do. Welcome to the show. It is a big night for all of the Mutant family. It is the last drive-in Halloween Hoot Nanny. Three mystery films. We're all hoping for Halloween 1, 2, and at least 3. I'm sure we're going to get like Christmas movies or something, no and Joe Bob. But tonight we are making... Mutant Brain Meatloaf. I can't stop playing with this hair. <laughs> and then after that, we are making a amazing cocktail slash dessert, a maple bourbon milkshake. So we got a lot to do, so we should get started. Before I do that, I need to introduce my new co-host, who will never be on camera, but he will be letting me know if you have questions so I can reply. The Hubs. Say hi, Hubs. Hi. <laughs> That's all you're getting from him, trust me. All right, let's run through these ingredients. Quickly, here we go. For the Mutant Brain Meatloaf, we have two yellow onions that we're gonna dice up, two tablespoons of good olive oil, two, uh, two teaspoons of kosher salt, some black pepper, one teaspoon of fresh thyme, one teaspoon of rosemary leaves, quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce, one uh, half cup of chicken stock, <laughs> three pounds of ground turkey, uh, two large extra, or excuse me, extra large eggs that we're gonna beat up, one and a half cups of breadcrumbs, and um, for the sauce that we're putting on the top, you need half a cup of ketchup, one tablespoon of smoky mustard and two tablespoons of brown sugar. That's all the ingredients for the meatloaf. We'll get to the milkshake in a little bit. So let's get all this out of the way and let's get started. Get your pan on medium. Get everything out of the way with the exception of the olive oil and the onions. <laughs> this hair. I don't know how you girls do it. <laughs> hey, here we go. I'm gonna be make a two drink tonight. All right, we have done onions before. Let's get that olive oil in the pan. If you got any questions as we go along, please let me know. We've done onions before, so I'm going to go a little quicker than I normally would. <laughs> it's out of control. All the right. women are saying ponytail. <laughs> ponytail? But then you don't know I'm Darcy, although I don't want to catch this on fire. Maybe over the shoulders? There we go. A little better. Okay. So, cut that bottom so you are not rolling around. Cut this in half with the nub end intact. Right on. Pull that skin off. Don't forget the skin part. Get that skin off. Here we go with 
the cutting of the onions. It's one of those tricks in the kitchen. Everyone should know how to do. Everything asks for onions. And this is the way to do it. This all the way. All right, so you got your flat end down so it's not rolling around. Hand on top. And we're gonna go. Horizontal. Then vertical. And we want a nice, small dice in this. You don't want to take a big bite of onion when you are chowing down on your meatloaf crate. Season 2, Friday, December 13th, Red Christmas. That's probably when he's going to show Halloween. Because <laughs> he likes to fuck with us. Definitely start to sizzle. Make sure you get all that onion coated with the olive oil. Cool, cool. A little bit of salt and pepper. Rosemary. <clears throat> we talked about 
this before. Rosemary is a very woody, stemmed herb. You do not want to try to cut that up. It's literally like a small twig. So what you're going to do is take the bottom piece that's uh, exposed, and you're just going to take your finger, and you're going to run it straight down. You get all that rosemary out, pull the tip off. You're going to do about three big stalks like that. Rosemary. Thyme, however, is a small stock. <clears throat> Our Creepy's Robin is asking about if you use expensive chopping knife and what a suggestion would be. Um, I do not have a suggestion for a brand. I can tell you that the knife is probably one of the most important pieces of equipment in your kitchen. You should spend money on your knife. This is um, probably like a $200, $220 knife here in the Chicago, Detroit kind of area. I got it in Detroit, probably about the same. Um, never skimp on your knife. A good sharp knife is your friend in the kitchen. If it's dull, like when you're cutting that onion, the dull knife is going to slide right off that onion, and that's how you cut yourself. So you need a nice expensive knife that has a very, very fine point on it, and you need to make sure you're getting it um, professionally sharpened at least once a year, if not twice. Hubs, can you hand me the, um, the sharpening stone, please? And you should, almost every time you use it, if not every time you use it, have a sharpening stone like this, and all you do, I go in fours, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, because what's happening is, Every time you're using this, it's dulling down that blade. Doing that every time you cook is taking it and putting it right back to where it was before you cooked last time. So you definitely want to keep this sharp. If you don't want to cut yourself, that's the number one thing you can do in the kitchen. So don't scrimp. A good pan, we talked about that last week, a good heavy bottom, maybe copper bottom pan, and a nice sharp knife are the two things in the kitchen that will make cooking so much easier for you. Good question. Thank you. All right. So let's get to these herbs. I'm just going to combine them together. Make sure you're stirring those onions. We don't want to get them too brown. A little bit of browning is okay because you're going to put some water in there. We've done that before. We've got little brown bits on the bottom of the pan. All right. So we're just bundling these herbs up. Taking it and just chop it once this way. Call for a teaspoon each, you can definitely go heavier. I'm going heavier. This is where a ton of your flavor is coming from. Turkey's a little bland. That's why when you do your Thanksgiving turkey, you add a ton of things to it. Um, <clears throat> it will absorb the flavors, but it's pretty bland on its own. All right, so we got that nice and chopped up. And as you can see, that's more like four teaspoons instead of the two, but like I said, it's bland, so you don't want that extra in there. Okay. So, let's give it a nice stir. As you can see, the onions are starting to loosen up. Give it out a little bit of liquid. That's what that steam is. It's starting to get a little soft. That's exactly what you want. We got about six more minutes on these onions. So what we're going to do is get the salt and pepper out of the way. And let's get to our uh, turkey. This is an 8515. 8515 uh, means there's 15% fat in here. Um, you could go a little leaner if you want. I don't mind the fat in something like a meatloaf because it is cooking for an hour and it can dry out a little bit. Definitely don't want fat, so that little bit of fat in there is going to kind of add some flavor, add some nice juice to your meatloaf. So we've got three pounds ground in here. 
Obviously, you can grind your own. I don't know anybody who would do that. <laughs> you can definitely have your butcher grind turkey breasts. That's even better. Um, this is all white meat. You could definitely use brown, uh, excuse me, dark meat if you uh, prefer. Dark meat has more flavor than the light meat. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to take and we are going to add the chicken stock or turkey stock if you have it. That's actually turkey stock. We're going to add. No, we're not. <laughs> Live TV. All right. Apologize about that. What we're going to add into this is the breadcrumbs. Apologize that. No. And we're going to add the eggs. Recipe calls for two extra large. I'm using three medium to large. Same difference. Give those a nice little whisk. Just trying to break up the yolks. Correct. Ah, uh, yes, correct. 
think is in the bio. Oh, look at that, I can see. I can see y'all. I can see so much, I'm having some Lone Star. I don't know if Darcy likes Lone Star. Daddy man Darcy does. All right, so we got this all combined. Get this turned off. Ideally, you would let this cool down a little bit. We obviously do not have that time because we want to make sure this meatloaf has cooked before the Halloween Hoot Nanny starts. So, we're going to put this in our meatloaf mixture. And what you're going to try to do is try to keep it. Notice how the eggs are kind of all around the side. While you're putting this in, try to keep it on your breadcrumbs and your meat. You don't want to scramble those eggs. Okay. Get all of it in there. No sprinkling. Drives me crazy when I watch shops and they just leave half of it in the pan. using our hands here. Alright, it almost looks like a brain already. 
So, you want to make it into the brain. You want it longer. You're looking for a tall oval. The front end, which is the end I'm working on here, is going to be a little skinnier. The back end is going to be flat, so hit that back end. <laughs> okay, let's flip that around. Okay, see where we're going with there? Smooth out the top, don't want any cracks. Got the flat back end, got the rounded off front end. Now, what we're going to do, it's back here. We're going to take a wooden spoon. You can definitely do this with a knife or something. It's just a little easier with a wooden spoon. And what we're going to do is we're going to come directly down the center. And we're going to leave a nub. I don't know if you all have a picture of a brain. I probably should have told you that ahead of time. But <clears throat> there's right half, left half. I think everyone knows that. There's a center part that connects the two halves. So do not go all the way up and down. You're going to do this about a third and push down pretty far because this meat loaf is going to puff up when it cooks. And if you don't go down far enough, it's going to be hard to see this divider. And then you're going to do the exact same thing in the front. Push down, but again, leave about a third, maybe a quarter in the center intact. Okay? I'm going to lift this up and show you what I just did. Again, use what you have. You could even use your fingers if you want. Just push it straight down in there. So see what I did there? You got the right half, left half, right lobe, left lobe. Can everybody see that? See that, hubs? Mm -hmm. Right on. Okay. So, also on the brain, you have some little kind of jut outs. So just give it a little squeeze there. Round it back out. My right half is a little bigger than my left half. That's all right. Great. And finally, what we're going to do. Oops, why do I keep going on there? So we're going to take these skewers. Again, you can use a knife. You can use forks. I can't touch my hair. <laughs> Thanks, Ops. I feel like that little girl from the ring. <laughs> and we're going to draw your little veiny lines. Again, going kind of deep. I'm just wriggling here a little bit. Trust me, there is no wrong here. It'll all look cool in the end. Just go all along your brain. <laughs> Note to self, think about the costume next year. All right, drawing my lines, wriggling it up. There you go. That is your big old brain. Okay, what is going to happen now is we are going to stick this in a, oh, i got to touch this with nasty hands, 365 degree oven for one hour. So get that in there now, one hour, don't panic, that is still 40 minutes before the start of the last drive-in. Holiday ham food nanny. I'm gonna get rid of this. Alright, we're gonna make the sauce. That's the glaze part. We're gonna take that brown sugar and the ketchup. And the smoky mustard. mustard. Go light on the salt, heavier on the pepper. Ketchup's already a little salty. Just give it a good mix. That's going to be the blood on the top of the brain after it cooks. So you've got your meatloaf in the oven now. 
set your timer for one hour. We're going to do a swap off. I'm not going to hold you guys for an hour. I know you got stuff to do before the big hoot nanny. You do have a swap out. First, okay, see how it's all nice and bloody and yummy. And it's going to make your meatloaf delicious. Okay. I'm going to wash my hands really quick. And what we're going to do now, we're going to switch over to the milkshake. Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> it's actually a bourbon drink that hubs will drink. Okay, let's get this. You need a blender. Easy peasy. And you need the blender plugged in. Not so easy. Here we go. Alright. I blame the weight, y'all. You just need your bourbon. You need your ice cream and your whipped cream. You need your maple syrup, a shot glass, and some milk. Two glasses. This is so easy, and you are not going to believe how good this is. I want Joe Bob to try this and see what he thinks. You know, he's finicky about his bourbon. So let's hit the ingredients. We got two cups of French vanilla ice cream. Again, best ice cream you can get because there's very few ingredients. The fewer the ingredients, the better you want the ingredients to be because you're going to taste everything. Two tablespoons of maple syrup. Pick your favorite, whatever you like on the pancakes. Four ounces of bourbon, which is going to be two of these. This is a double shot glass, maybe three or four. One half cup of milk. I was just shaking the set no. And... So whipped cream, this is easy, easy, easy. Everything goes in this blender, except for the whipped cream. Ice cream in. Oh my God, ice cream's good and frozen. Ice cream in. This is gonna make two. You can't really double it up. The blender's only so big, but it's easy to make, so. We're having a party. Have your ingredients sitting out. Everybody can make their own. Alright, oops. Here's your milk. Or excuse me, your ice cream. Milk. Frozen milk. Two of these shots, which is four ounces of the good stuff. And for Joe Hobbs, so you know it's Russell's Reserve. A little bit more. Hobbs is making a face. I'm drinking it too. Just a touch more. It's a hoot nanny, y'all. Get your milk in there. Get your syrup. Or, yeah, maple syrup in there. I got a little extra in here for the top. This is so good, y'all. Yeah. 
bunch of my hair. <laughs> a little maple syrup on the top. And last but not least, the cherry. There you go. That is maple bourbon milkshake. Right there. It's delicious. One for the producer hubs. It almost has a taste of eggnog, a little bit. Way too strong for hubs. Love it. <laughs> so that is that drink. Now we're going to do, we're going to fast forward. In reality, it's only been about 15 minutes. In internet television time, it's been an hour. You're going to take that brain out. This is what you get. Still see the dividing. Still see the lines. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take that glaze we just made. We're going to liberally brush that glaze on there. At least half of it. Maybe more. Get all that juicy mutant blood on there. I think I killed hubs. I no longer have a producer. If anyone would like to produce this show, they can actually hold their liquor. Let me know. Name of the bourbon, please. This is Russell's Reserve. I first heard about it from Mr. Joe Bob. And I'll show you. I don't remember what episode it was. He was talking about bourbons. It is from uh, Kentucky, I believe. Helps is going to read that. It's um, Russell's Reserve Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. There you go. It's uh, there you go. Look at that. Tell you folks, production is just getting higher and higher. <laughs> So, we're going this. No guesses on the movies from anybody? Y'all just want to be surprised. I believe Darcy said she's got three different outfits tonight, which is amazing. Tell, tell you what, I, uh... Oh, someone said I need a raise. I agree. <laughs> I told him he's going to get a raise. We double our viewership, he's going to double his salary from zero to zero. I smell a strike. <laughs> and here you got your braid. See how sassy he gets after one milkshake? Sassy. Alright, that is your mutant brain. We're going to stick this back in the oven for about five to ten minutes. And that's it. Beautiful. It's mutant brain. That's your milkshake. That is the party from the Mutant Cafe Kitchen. Can't believe I did it in 45 minutes. That was the goal. That's it for this week. I will see you in the Twitterverse coming up in about an hour and 20 minutes. Don't forget to tune in to Shudder, Joe Bob Briggs, Darcy the Mail Girl. It is the last drive-in Halloween Hoot Nanny. Don't forget to use the hashtags. I think it's Halloween Hoot Nanny, Joe Bob Halloween, and um, obviously the last drive-in. I will. Uh, that should be staying in. Don't forget an hour. Code it, and then another ten minutes. Um, I will see you next week when Newton Cafe is starting November Giallo Week. First thing we're cooking is a delicious chicken curry. If you've got any questions about that, the recipe will be up on Sunday night, maybe Monday. We won't be tired after this uh, little three-hour movie fest. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm guessing. Anybody got any last questions? If not, we are going to sign off, y'all. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed your meatloaf. I really appreciate y'all being here especially on a special occasion like tonight. Enjoy your meatloaf. 
and I will see you next week. Enjoy your marathon.